it is time for us to start talking about objects in our game scene. And all these objects, they might have an image, right? A PNG associated with them. Each one of them might have a different position in this 2D screen. They might have a different velocity, rotation. And as they move, we need to check for collisions. Some of them might be emitting projectiles. So we have several things that we have to think about whenever we're talking about these objects. And notice how I'm using the word objects a lot in our conversation, right? Uh, objects, uh, game development is almost like this perfect sandbox for us to play around with these ideas of object-oriented programming. Think about it, right? We have enemies, they are going to be objects in our screen. We have a group of particles, all these particles are going to be small objects. And each one of these objects, they will have attributes and properties. And the structure of these objects will come from a blueprint of a class. Right? So we will have to create classes to dictate what are the attributes and methods of each one of these objects in the screen. I use game development a lot whenever I have to teach the basics of object-oriented programming. Right? It fits like a glove. Right? If you think about these objects on the screen, and the idea of thinking about variables, thinking about software components as objects. You see, a lot of the ideas of object-oriented programming we can apply with C++ here in our project. So speaking of C++, let's look at how C++ works with these ideas of instantiating objects, where in memory we can create these objects. Let's look at this thing very quickly. So first things first. I think we already created a couple of objects in our implementation but we haven't paid attention to much of how these things work. Right? So you will see that programmers will talk about these ideas of creating objects in the stack. So the stack in memory is one of the places that we can go and instantiate objects, right? create objects. A stack, if you kind of think about this conceptual idea of a stack in memory, is this place that we can go and push values. So it grows the stack and we can also pop values. right? So we can go and fetch values, pop them, and the stack will shrink. So we push values to the stack and we pop values from the stack. The stack is basically this place in memory. It's contiguous, right? So it is a sequence of values. You push, you pop. The operating system is the one responsible for giving you a specific size of the memory for the stack. And then we can just have this little place where we can create objects. The objects will be pushed to the stack and we can also pop them from the stack. How do we do that? Well, we have been doing that already, right? So think about this thing right here. We have a function, right? A random function. And then inside this function, I can create an object in the stack. So if I don't use the new keyword to create an object, right? If I'm not using the new keyword, if I just say enemy, enemy, this will create a normal object in the memory stack, right? It goes, it pushes that object to the stack, it's just one simple processor instruction. It's very fast, very easy. And then, as long as I am inside this block right here where I created my object, right? as long as I'm inside this scope, I can do whatever I want with my object. Right? So I create my object, I can invoke some methods, I can jump, I can run 20 pixels, I can invoke the method look left. And right here, this is the beauty of creating objects in the stack. As soon as we go out of scope, that object will be automatically destroyed. And by destroyed, I mean we deallocate the memory that we allocated before for that object. We free that resource, right? C++, there is no garbage collector. We are the ones responsible for managing memory. So one of the beauties of working with the stack is as soon as I create an object and I work with that object, if I leave that scope, that thing is uh, that thing goes out of scope and that object is automatically deallocated the compiler knows and puts all the instructions to go and deallocate that object okay uh, just quick review in stack allocation happens on contiguous blocks of memory right so the stack is this contiguous block of memory so you can just grow and shrink that is very beneficial for us the size of memory to be allocated is known to the compiler. So the compiler knows whenever it is creating the processor instructions, the compiler knows how much and how much it needs to deallocate here as well. The stack has a fixed size. So this is important, right? And this is operating system dependent, right? So I think Microsoft Visual Studio, for example, gives you one megabyte by default in the stack. So you have a fixed 
amount that you can work with the stack, right? Some operating systems, uh, they let you tweak a little bit how much you can you have from stack, but usually it is a fixed size is not that big. So you have a limited size to work with the stack and you probably heard things like stack overflow, right? So stack overflow, I think everyone is aware of that expression. Stack overflow is basically whenever we um, start pushing everything and then we go beyond the limits that the stack allows us to keep. So the stack has a fixed size. It is OS dependent. You don't have to worry about memory allocation or deallocation of stack variables. If I create a normal object in the stack, the compiler knows how to automatically allocate the memory that I need, and he automatically calls the constructor method. And then we can do whatever we want with that object. We are free to use that object. And as soon as we end that scope, so as soon as we go out of scope, we call the destructor method and we deallocate the memory of that object. And if you think about it, we are already doing this with a couple of objects in our implementation. Do you remember in our main function where I declared an object of the class game? I made a judgment call there to create an object game simply on the stack. I call the methods initialize, run, destroy, and then as soon as we go out of scope, as we leave this function, that object will be destroyed. I call the destructor and I deallocate the memory of the game object. And we can see that this is true by looking at our logger. Right? If you look at the message that we have right there, it says game constructor called, game destructor called. So I didn't have to manually call the destructor. The destructor is being called as soon as we go out of scope in our main function. But of course, the stack is not the only place in memory where you can go and create objects, right? We don't want to have only this one megabyte, two megabyte limit amount of memory to create our objects and work with. So that is why you will have something called the heap, right? So the heap is also memory, but it is this free store of memory, right? So you can go and you can, as you need more memory, you can go and you can allocate more memory from the heap. If you need more, you can ask again to allocate more memory from the heap. You need more, more memory from the heap. And of course, as your program grows in complexity, you might need more and more and more and more memory, right? So as your program starts running, sometimes you need to have more objects, sometimes you need to have more particles. So as soon as you create more objects, more particles, chances are that you need to go and allocate more memory from the heap, right? That is probably the good option, right? The heap being this free store, you can usually go allocate more, but there is just one gotcha with the heap, right? As we are allocating more and more and more and asking for the operating system to allocate more blocks of memory, we are the ones responsible for going and remembering to deallocate everything. If we don't deallocate, we're gonna have memory leaks, right? So we're going to use the memory and then memory gets lost and never gets deallocated. And that's a problem. Okay, so let's just look how we can create and use this free store, right? This the heap to go and create C++ objects. Simple, right? To create a C++ object, I can use this syntax right here. So it here creates an object in the heap using the new keyword. Remember when I mentioned the new keyword? So if I use new and I ask for, so my class type, an enemy, right? And you see how I have to have a little pointer. So an object, is a pointer to something in memory, right? All we have is a pointer to an object. And if you ever work with Java, for example, you know that Java objects, they are under the hood pointers, right? If you ever experienced a no pointer exception in Java, it's because an object was not instantiated, right? We didn't create a constructor of that object. But I digress, going back to C++. C++, I say, what is the class type? Pointer, right, a little star the name of my object, so I just decided to call it enemy, equals to new enemy, open, close parenthesis. This thing right here is my constructor method, right? It's the constructor method that I'm calling. I go, I create an object using the new keyword. This is allocated and created on the heap, right? I go, jump, run, look left, I can use my object as I want, but I need to remember to manually call delete as soon as I want to go and free the resources. So delete will call the destructor of that object and will also deallocate memory that was allocated here. It looks simple, right? It looks very simple. Oh, I just have to remember to go and delete the objects. Uh, as our application, as our game engine, as our anything that you create becomes more and more complex, you will see that remembering to deallocate things will get a little bit trickier, right? So 
yeah, there are cases where we actually have some memory leaks. We have to go use profilers to manage things. So it can get pretty complex, right? Using C++, being responsible for managing memory like we are right here, it can get a little bit trickier with time. But we will learn a couple of techniques as well to help us with that. So in the heap, memory is allocated dynamically and it's usually not contiguous, right? So if you're asking for blocks of memory, there is a chance that these blocks of memory are not going to be in this linear, right? In this sequential blocks of memory in the heap. The heap has no fixed size restrictions. So whenever you ask for memory, the heap has virtually access to the entire memory of your hardware. But just as a side note, handling heap memory is usually slower than handling stack. And that kind of makes sense for me, right? The fact that if I'm using the stack, stack memory is linear, is contiguous. And to grow and shrink my stack to push and pop values from it, that is basically one processor instruction. I just go and push, I just go and pop. And that is obviously a lot faster than if we have to go and ask the operating system for blocks of memory to allocate. And especially if those blocks of memories are not going to be sequential, they are not going to be contiguous, memory can be fragmented all over the place. So accessing memory in the heap is usually slower, right? Relatively slower than the stack. And of course, just as a final note, the programmer is the one responsible for remembering to deallocate the object in memory. So if I used new to allocate something in the heap, I am the one responsible for remembering to call delete in that object. Because if I don't, I will have a memory leak, right? We have to remember that. So we spoke about this new and delete keywords. Let me just zoom in and explain really what new and delete do, right? So uh, look at this example, right? Very basic. I create a little pointer. Uh, I use new to create an object in the heap. I use my object and then I delete my object. You will see that new and delete, they are this C++ way of improving a little bit what happened in C programs back in the day. So if you ever program with C, in C we had a little instruction called malloc, right? So we can go and say allocate memory and I say how many bytes in memory I want to allocate but we were responsible for going and then initializing, right? Uh, starting the object with the correct values and everything. With the new keyword, the new keyword is a way that C++ created and, and came up with joining both of these things together. So with new, I allocate memory and I also initialize. And by initialize, I mean, we call the constructor method of that object, okay? So whenever I say new, object, right, new constructor method, I allocate memory and I call the constructor. And on the other hand, whenever we use the delete, the delete is the join of two old school C commands, right? So I deinitialize my object, so I go and I clean everything that I need to clean, I do all the, uh, the instructions that I need to destruct that object, but I also deallocate. So there was this C common called free. There's this function called free that went there and deallocated those bytes in memory. So delete is the join of these two things. I call the destructor of that class and I free the resources. I deallocate the memory that I have. That is what new and delete do, right? So I say new enemy, I allocate and I call the constructor. I call delete enemy, I call the destructor and I deallocate the memory of that object. That is it. That's what new and delete do. Um, so just as a summary right here, the new keyword will allocate the necessary memory for that object and it will initialize, meaning calling the appropriate constructor for the object. And delete is almost the inverse, right? I will deinitialize that object by calling the destructor and delete will also deallocate, free that memory that was used by the object. So there you go. I thought it was important for us to just zoom in and understand what new and delete do, right? New allocates and calls a constructor, delete calls a destructor and deallocates. That's pretty much it, right? That's how C++ reasons about all these things that are happening with new and delete. Because we are going to use uh, these ideas of creating objects a lot in our game engine, right? We're going to talk about creating entities, components, systems, particles, uh, checking for collisions understanding how to allocate memory, and most importantly, free that memory, 
that is going to help us a lot from now on in our course.